What is happening everybody? Derek here from DW Designs and welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be covering the fundamentals of sheet metal. Now this is gonna be two to four part series I'm gonna do on sheet metal alone so you guys can get an understanding on how to work with sheet metal because sometimes it can be difficult. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about templates, how to make a template and all the stuff that goes into the basics of starting a project like this. So before we get started, I'd like to steal a plug from a guy named Andy Frisilla. Some of you out there might know who he is. I wanna say pay the fee. And what I mean by that is, if you guys get any, gain any value, learned anything, please share, subscribe, hit the like button, notifications. That's all I ask. Let's get to work. So to give you an idea with what we're dealing with here is this piece of sheet metal here. It's in the base of this vintage Coca-Cola machine. Now. As you guys can see here, there's some holes that do not belong there. All these from here over do not belong. This one doesn't belong and that one doesn't belong. This one, however, does. It, what it does is a copper tube goes through that to drain the water into the excess drain that goes down out the bottom into a floor drain, basically, is how I understand it works. And so with that being said, because it's got little rust issues everywhere. We're just gonna go ahead and replace the whole entire floor. And the things we gotta take into consideration is we gotta have this flange right here. And then underneath, there's also a half inch in length flange that goes all the way around the inside, but underneath. And what that allows is so you can spot weld it to the steel on the machine itself. So we gotta take that into account as well. So let's go ahead and grab the measurements get them written down, and then we'll go ahead and start making a template. So I went ahead and pulled up the measurements for the floor. These are our measurements. So you wanna make sure you measure from left to right, inside to inside, forward to back, inside to inside, and get every single measurement possible. So that way we make sure that we have everything correct. And that hole is gonna be one inch um, diameter. I wrote DIA, but that stands for diameter. That's that. Now the bottom is a half inch flange, as you guys can see, um, I've written that over there in the concrete section on that picture. And then the front flange is one and one eighth inches tall. So we gotta make sure that we incorporate that into our cardboard cutout as well. Let's get into cutting some cardboard. We're not ready to cut yet, but I wanted to go over the basic tools that I believe everyone should have in their arsenal as far as making templates goes. And that is, you're gonna need at least two different kinds of squares. One shorter one, one really long one. You're gonna need um, circle templates. It usually comes with two. I'm missing my other one currently. A good pencil, pen, really fine tip Sharpie if you're gonna use a Sharpie because you wanna be able to follow the lines perfectly. And of course, some scissors. Um, you do not have to buy these kind of scissors. You can use regular scissors, but I noticed with this thick cardboard cardstock um, material, it's easier to cut it with this. And if it's small enough, I actually have a dedicated paper cutter machine. It almost acts like a metal shear and it shears it for you and it works phenomenal. So that's your basics. Um, you could build your arsenal of other things later, like, you know, a, a big um, circumference um, tool. Let me go grab that. That was fast, movie magic. So this acts a lot like a compass in a way but it's more of a like big circle circumference piece because it's got a lot mo more um, flexibility as far as lengthwise goes. Not so much short width wise. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would recommend a compass for that. So you grab yourself one of these. Almost all this, okay, so this kind of stuff you can buy at like Home Depot, Lowe's. 
Uh, this you can buy at Michael's. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe I bought this at Michael's too. I can't remember, but um, I'm just gonna go with it. And these kind of scissors, they're shearing scissors. Um, you can buy those at like Home Depot as well if you really want to pick up something like that. Pencil, it's just any old pencil. So let's uh, start mapping this thing out. One thing I forgot to take into account is most likely you will need a tape measure. So I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. Okay, so as you guys can see here, um, we need a total length of 12 and 5 16 but we also have that flange down here that is inch and an eighth tall. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take 12 and 5 16 and add one and an eighth to that. And then whatever that totals is what we're gonna have to make it lengthwise. My apologies, I mean widthwise. One thing we're gonna go over real quick is I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick that my grandfather taught me personally because I always struggled to read a tape measure and he always tried drilling it in my head to get this down and I learned it finally because of the ways that he taught me how to do it. And that is if you guys don't like doing math, um, this is one way to do it. And I, this is just a trick. Um, I do math all the time, but this makes it really easy. So you have 12 and uh, 5 16 which is gonna be uh, right here. That's your 12 and 5 16 mark right there where the end of my fingernail is. And then you have inch and 1 8 which is where the end of my fingernail is right here. So we need to add those two together. So a quick way that my grandfather showed me how to do this, if you don't wanna get all complex in mathematics, is so you have your 12, and you have that one inch that you got to add, right? So you're going to just add that inch, which puts you at 13. And then you have your one eighth because it's inch and an eighth that you got to add to it. So you're going to add that eighth inch to it. And then from there, you still have five sixteenths left over that you got to add, right? So all you're going to do is just count five sixteenths, which is these little itty bitty marks. And you're going to count, you're not going to go like this one and then there. You're going to count every single one. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, it lands us right there at the 7 16 mark right there, just before half. So that's 7 16 And so it's gonna be 13 and 7 16 of an inch wide. Okay, now for you guys out there that wanna know what the decimal point is, it is 13.4375. That is the decimal um, point of this fraction. So. Let's go ahead and scribe our line back here from front to back. I like to work front to back when it comes to doing it this way. Um, so we're gonna lay this out just like so. And then we're going to find our mark of 13 and 7 sixteenths. We're gonna make our mark there. We're gonna come down here, down the paper a little ways. And we're gonna make another mark. Okay. Now, I know the pencil is like virtually invisible on this paper and I apologize, um, but I don't like doing my templates in pen a lot of times until everything is set in stone for the reason being of if I made a mistake, I can go back and easily erase it and not have to scrap the whole paper because otherwise it gets confusing on what line is what if you do it in pen and then find out you gotta redo it and then you got these lines just going everywhere and it'll drive you crazy, trust me, it will. So we'll just go ahead and stick with the pencil for right now. So we're gonna go ahead and scribe that line in and I'm gonna do it all the way across I'm not going to take any shortcuts. We're going to go all the way across. And the reason being is so that way we can just cut one cut all the way across and then we're done with that. However, before we cut, I just realized something that I need to share with you guys. And that is we have to add a half inch to the back of this piece here. And the reason for that is, is that flange that goes underneath. 
I'm gonna burn an inch, and this is more accurate. And what I mean by this, guys, what I mean by burn an inch, don't like try and line up the end of this stupid thing that moves on the end. Burn an inch means put the line right on this line right there. Sorry, it's having a hard time focus here. So you're gonna put that line right on the center of whatever you're trying to do. And then, and then you just add however much you need to be, which on this case is gonna be half an inch. So you're just gonna add a half an inch there, half an inch somewhere else down the line. Do it in two or three paces, depending on, on um, what you're doing. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna draw your line in, half inch out from that line there. And what that's gonna cause is, now you have your flange. These two lines are complete. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find our width-wise. Now we're gonna, we're gonna start with our widest point. As you guys saw in the beginning, we have those notches in the, in the front there. But we're not gonna worry about those right now. We're just gonna make it the whole entire width because they're actually narrower. So we're gonna start with the widest point, cut it out. So we'll have just a perfect square to start with and that's it. Our total width overall in the back of the machine is 27 inches even, okay? Now what we're gonna do is because we need a half inch flange on each side, just like this, we're gonna add one inch. So it's just gonna make it 28 inches even. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start from left to right. I find it the easiest for me. So we're gonna go 28 inches right here. Gonna make a little bitty mark there. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. 28 inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and scribe our line in from top to bottom. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to add our inch, but we're gonna go facing inward because this is the outside, which is gonna be folded down. So we're gonna add it, we're gonna burn an inch, we're gonna put it at two inches, okay? And then we're gonna mark our half inch there. And then once again, half inch out, once I get it accurately here, okay, half inch again. Now, generally speaking, guys, on something like this, you would want to dash your lines so you know to bend there. Um, if you read blueprints from like blueprinting companies and stuff like that to have you make stuff, it might be something different. Um, it might be a dash with a with like a like a lightning bolt symbol through it or something like that. Um, I'm not saying I'm 100% right there. It's been a while since I've done any like blueprint reading, so um, don't hold me to that. But for this sake of this video, I'm going to make it a solid line because it's easier to see on camera. But just remember that you don't cut there, you bend there. And I'll take it up to here as well. There we go. So you got a little square here in the corner, which is just what you want. And by the way, in the end, when we are cutting out the sheet metal, this little square that you see here, which is why I take it all the way through, you're gonna cut that square out. Because if you don't, what happens is, is it will kink right in here and it won't fit properly. So when you bend it here, you can, if you wanted to, you can actually weld the seams together because it'll come and meet perfectly in the middle like a, like a sandwich. Um, so you can butt weld it together if you wanted to. In this instance, we probably won't, but we'll see how, uh, how it comes out if we'll weld it or not. And before I continue, because the next clip is gonna be different, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side with the same thing over there. I'm not gonna show that because it's the same process. And just for your information, for old sakes of making sure nothing gets messed up, I wrote bend 
right here. I know it's very faint and you probably can't see it on camera, but I wrote it on every section. So that way we know that this section gets bent and that's it. Now we're gonna cut it out. Now, don't throw this out, guys. This is a perfectly good piece of cardboard. Use it for something else. And then you can use it for something smaller like this. So put that somewhere safe where it's not gonna get crumpled up and crumpled and all that, or wet, and uh, keep that. Same thing with this top piece that we're gonna cut off. Granted, it's not expensive. Um, just so you guys know, these cost about a dollar a sheet and you can buy them at most upholstery shops. I don't know if you can get them at Michael's or Joann's or any like craft store. I haven't looked. Craft paper might work, but a lot of times it's uh, still too thin. As you can tell, this is a lot more heavier and it doesn't uh, flex as much. And if you have a sheet metal shear, by the way, guys, um, to cut sheet metal, this a sheet metal shear would actually work too. And it'd be better than trying to cut it out by hand. You'd actually get even straighter lines. But unfortunately, I do not have one. So I work with what I got. And the paper cutter shear that I have is not wide enough to cut this size in particular. It's only good for like smaller stuff that I do. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tape measure and we're going to measure inch and an eighth from the bottom and we're going to mark that and draw a line across there and mark it as bend up as well. Um, these are going to be bend down. So we're going to go ahead and write that. So inch, inch and an eighth right there and one over here. We're gonna take our square and we will need to put one in the middle too. We will go ahead and mark our lines in. So as you guys can see here, this is a very simple process of creating the template. It really is and there, there are more complicated templates that you can make. Like for example, a battery box or, you know, a tab. There's all kinds of options that you can, oh wow, I really messed that one up. Did I? No, no I didn't. See, this, this is why you check your work guys. <laughs> didn't mess it up, but we're good. See, I don't know why off down here. Oop, inch and an eight. That's right there. Okay. Um, something isn't right. Oh, yep. Yeah, no. I did measure it wrong. See, so guys, this is what I'm talking about. This is where a pencil comes in handy. Erase that. I marked it an inch and a quarter in the middle and out here instead of inch and an eighth. And so now. We have a line that doesn't belong here. This is why I like pencil. It's easy to erase. That's why you double check your work too. If something looks off, reevaluate, start over. So that line's right down there. Okay, this one was the one that got messed up, the one in the middle. So there we go. Now, it's correct. Now we can start over. With a pencil, it was just that easy. Pen, you couldn't erase it, and you'd have lines going everywhere, and sometimes that can get confusing. If you guys don't mind dealing with that, props to you, go for it. You do you, I'll do me. I'm just here to show you guys. That's done we have our line down here we're gonna hit the bend 
up just like that at that line. Now, I know this is getting boring, guys. Stay with me, all right? Stay with me to the end, you might learn something. What's happening next is we're gonna check our measurements. So in the front here, we have um, three different things going on here. So we have three different notches and they're all different widths and different lengths. So this way and in this way. So we're gonna have to figure that one out. So let's go ahead and tackle that. So our first one's going to be seven eighths of an inch back. So we're gonna have to measure from the front back seven eighths of an inch. Now, I need to double check a measurement before I do this. Um, I didn't take that measurement, which will be from inside to inside of the flange itself. I didn't take that measurement. So let me do that real quick. The inch and an eighth flange itself is 24 and um, 5 sixteenths. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on here and notch this first. So that way we know where to start from there. So the easiest way to do this is, I'm gonna write down the measurement real quick so I don't forget it, is to find center of this, which is 28 inches on the dot. So half that will be, let's see, will be 14. So we're gonna write 14 there, 14 there. Draw a line right down the, straight down the middle. Okay. Anytime you see something with a C on it, which I'm gonna put on here, means your center line, okay? So I'm gonna put a C right here. You barely see that on there. And then 24 and 5 sixteenths wide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 24 and 5 sixteenths and we're going to half that. And once we half that, we will take the measure tape measure and go each way, mark it, mark it, and then cut off the ends right there. And we'll go ahead and figure out the rest from there. So the measurement is half of 24 and 5 sixteenths which is gonna be 12 and um, 532s if I remember correctly. And so we'll take 12 and 532s, which is by the way, in between a 16th. So one of the little itty bitty lines and you'll mark it right here. We'll do the same thing over here. It's right here. All right. And then you take your overall measurement. I'm gonna burn an inch on this one. And that equals, yep, that equals 25, 24 and uh, 5 sixteenths. And I burned an inch, so it's gonna say 25, but it's really 24. All right. So there we go. We'll just uh, take a square, small one. And I'm just gonna press it up against the bottom since the bottom is square. We're gonna line it up with our mark. And we're just going to mark it like so. Same thing on the other side. Mark it like so. There's, there you go. Then you can go ahead and we can cut this out. Now, remember guys, all the fundamentals here that I'm showing you can apply to other things, not just making this, which is why I'm showing you this. There's many other things that we can make. Um, doing this. In fact, I want to make an announcement that I will be coming out with a project for everyone to do. Um, I'm going to call it each type of challenge. I'm not going to tell you what kind of challenge it is yet, but I will be coming out with that. It will be available on my website and there'll be plans and all that stuff for you guys to do that. Um, you can even order the stuff from me um, if you don't have the materials to make it. But like I said, that's coming later on down the road. Let's go ahead and cut these notches out real quick and then move on to the next. Next up is we're gonna make the zigzags or the notches in the paper. 
So the first measurement is actually seven eighths inward. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here a little bit better for you to see. And then what that's going to allow us to do, so seven eighths of an inch, what that's gonna allow us to do is to make a mark, designated mark all the way across as far as the notch goes. So I'm gonna burn an inch like that. We're gonna go seven eighths of an inch, which is the last eighth inch before it goes over to one inch. We're gonna do that again over here. We'll take our small square right here. And then we're gonna draw our line in. So that's our seven eighths difference right there. Next, what we're going to do, let's do it on the other side. We'll cut that out and then it'll do next. We got one more to repeat, but I'm not gonna show that, only for the reason being is because it's the same exact process once more to get the last notch. And then we're done with this piece as far as um, cutting it out and getting it correct goes. What we'll do next after this, after I finish this, is bend all the bends that belong in here, and then we're gonna test it to see if it fits in the Coca-Cola machine properly. Okay, so we finished cutting all this. Um, as you can see, there's a relief right here and that gets bent down. So what this does is it allows it to miss some of the stuff that is under there um, that you cannot currently see. I went ahead and notched the back square corners back there so we can go ahead and bend this. So let's go over to the brake and bend it and you guys get a feeling and get to see what it looks like. So here we are at the finger brake. And of course, I need to add another die to the brake. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this end down here. And it just need to be finger tight for what we're doing at the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and let's open this up some more. Like I said, for this, only finger tight because it's just cardboard. I will need to tighten them up later though for when I do the metal. So go ahead and stick that upside down because it's got it, the bottom's got to be bent down. Now the nice thing is with the notches is you can just line that up. You don't have to mark the back side like you would normally. So you just line it up at the end here. And I know some of you probably are wondering, why on earth would you use a brake to bend cardboard? Well, the easy answer is, is well, it makes it really easy to make sure everything is right. So what it really comes down to is making sure everything is correct, as well as you get nice straight bends, so you can really make sure that it is correct. So we're just gonna bend it, you know, 90 degrees or so, or because it's paper, go all the way around. And what that's gonna do is create a nice sharp bend there, almost like sheet metal. And the nice thing about this paper is it reacts like sheet metal too. So if it breaks in a certain area or doesn't seem to work right, this will tell you like right away. And it's amazing how it works. Same thing with this guy here. Gonna go ahead and bend this up as well. <laughs> ah, can't bend it. And there you have it, all done. And then do the other side, and you have a matching piece. All right, we got this all bent up, all three sides, well four technically. 
and they fit up nice. So we could weld the corners, like I said, if we wanted to. May or may not haven't decided yet. And now I will tell you right now, I did try fitting this in here earlier. Um, however, it won't fit because of these brackets here. It has to go up from underneath. So we're gonna have to cut this out. But in all fairness, I am 100% sure it'll fit because even just getting one side in, it fits really, really nice in there. After you get it past this little bead roll here, it fits really nice down in there. So, and it lines up perfectly with everything. So, that's it. It's going to be it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. This is going to conclude today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one.